to get back into your RPA University, questions like I've been asked before is like, you know, I guess like, what would you say your success rate is? That's a good question. So I started with just friends and family, right? Just people who I knew. So there was a good friend of mine, like I met him in network marketing at PHP, right? I got out, I transitioned into RPA. I tried to tell him about it. He was like, nah, bro, I'm cool. He's one of those guys who loves complexity, okay? And I'm not. Then I started making 100000 a quarter million dollars, half million dollars a year. And he's like, okay. And he, I started buying cars, paying off my house, and not paying off my part, paying off things. I bought a house, things like that. And he saw my lifestyle changing. And he's like, okay, wait, bro, show it to me. I showed it to him. And he was like, there's no fucking way it's this simple. I'm like, yes. You, which are dumbass, you like complexity. And that's why you've been doing. Bro wrote a whole script. Like, he spent hundreds of hours writing a script to go on LinkedIn to recruit people for him. Hundreds of you know hours. That was funny. There was a tool that would have did that for him without even having to write that. Did it exist back in like 2016, 2017? Probably so. Probably. Because all those recruiters and all them Mm -hmm. using all different type of tools to do that type of stuff. And so like, that's his thing. I guess he gets significance from being able to solve complex problems. Um, And so he came in within the day of us sitting down to him getting a job. Three weeks later, he was employed. Right. So I tell the people the fastest person ever do is three weeks. Right. I have a leveling system in my um, program. Right. And level one is rookie, you know nothing. You come in and you just do this or this stuff, right? By the time we reach level four, you're applying for jobs and interviewing. I've never had anyone apply. I'm sorry. I've never had someone get to level four and not get employed. Never. Now, if you get to level four and you give up and you stop applying, that ain't on me, bro. You, that's, that's a discouragement issue. So what do you say to people that's watching this right now saying he's lying or he's capping? Because, because like I said, they know. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I told him they know I don't. I just don't bring people up here. Mm-hmm. So like, what if they say? Oh, he's lying. He, you know, he didn't make this money, or uh, these people not getting no jobs, or like, or either. How can they even find out from some people who've taken the program? Yeah, about for sure. You know, yeah. Two answers to that. If you think I'm lying, I I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I do not care. <laughs> I don't care. Like, don't do business with me. Don't watch my reels. Don't like. And and that's how my mentor in network marketing was. So he was very different. It's like, we're not begging anyone to do anything. Like mm-hmm. if what you're doing is working, keep doing it. And if it's not, maybe you want to look at what I'm doing. Right. But to the other question, go watch my testimonials on my YouTube. Like everybody who is on my testimony on my YouTube, you can go look up there. I like how you said that, bro. You were like, you can go Google my testimony. Like you can go find them, go on LinkedIn. Like, and my students are like, bro, here's the thing, bro. Like I try to, I don't try to be humble. I really don't talk as much shit as I could. Like, I'm changing people, or not I am. I'm giving people the opportunity to change their lives. Like, mm-hmm. I have a friend who went from $75,000 a year to $300,000 a year learning the skill set of RPA. Like, I'm helping people change. Now, I'm not saying I'm, I'm not taking credit because he did the work. Yeah, he yeah. wouldn't did it. But I'm giving you the... He said to me, he was like, bro, all of the best opportunities have come through you. He's like, bro, every time you do something, it works, and I just fucking copy you. He's like, I'm not taking risks. I'm going to let you do it, and then I'm going to fucking copy Right. I had a guy. True story. His name is Joe. I love talking about Joe, bro. He was my he was the guy. He was a client that I had that made me say, um, all right, bro, I got to I got to take this. I got to take this shit to Instagram. I got to start building a business. Let me set the story. So I have a good friend. Um, and I won't get into his lifestyle. He's a very interesting lifestyle. Right. Especially with like, like he and his wife date women together and things like that. So I was like fascinated when I met him. I was like, bro, I've got to learn everything about what you're doing, right? So what I did was I did RPA services for him in his business in exchange for like learning what it is that he knows, right? Mm-hmm. Um and it's funny now that like I've learned it all. He don't contact me and I don't contact him. So we only call each other when we need something. It's hilarious. It's like you don't even like me. Um but um during that point in time I went to one of his sister's birthday parties. At this birthday party, he basically was like, all right, all the women over there all the guys over here, you need to listen to this guy, AD. He's got an opportunity. I'm not telling you that you have to invest in it. I'm telling you, if you want to, if you really want to like win in the next few years, you need to get with this guy and do what he's doing, right? So there's me, the guy, and my like my friend. And then there's like six or seven other guys, right? Mm-hmm. Two of the guys, and this goes back to my point of not liking working with people who work in tech. Two of the guys are already in tech. Right. They one works at Microsoft and he's making six figures. The other guy works somewhere else and he's job stacking, he's making whatever he's making. And Joe was the least qualified of all of them. Joe was a roadside assistance driver 
married married man, father of two, lives in Fort Worth. His income was like twenty to thirty five thousand, somewhere in there, right? Mm-hmm. And when I started working, and this this was the point where I was working with everybody one on one. I'm not doing one on one anymore. Like I have like a course and I have coaches and things like that. Um, and so when I started working with Joe, what I first realized was like, okay, he's, a, he's what I call a tinkerer. Like he gets it. Like the, the, the bot building, like he's the kind of guy who like would take a toaster apart and like look at all the parts and then put it back together. Like he just, his brain works like to the personality test thing. Right. Mm-hmm. He thinks in a way to where the RPA and bot building stuff just comes natural to him. I'm like, all right, great. So then we um get to the interview portion and like, to, I, I, to be totally honest with you, I'm like, bro, like his self-confidence was so low, so low. He's a bigger, heavier set dude. And also, I love him, right? I, nothing I'm saying here, I've not said to him, right? Um, I even called, last time I talked to him, I, was just, I just picked the phone up, and I was like, bro, I love you. I just love you, bro. Like, you you showed me what the fuck was possible. Anyway, we get to the interview phase, and he's just doing terrible. I didn't have the idea to, like, record the interviews and bring it back. That I hadn't had that thought yet, right? And he's getting despondent. He's not really applying for jobs. And so I'm like talking to him. And uh, oh, I want to make sure I said it. His, his, his self confidence was so low that I was like, bro, I didn't say it out loud, but I was thinking, I don't know if you, I don't think you can pull this off. I don't think, I don't think you have what it takes. I don't think you're going to be successful. I'm not saying it out loud because I don't want to discourage him. And I also don't want to like validate it to myself. Right. Mm-hmm. And so he starts doing interviews. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's doing terrible. When I talk to him, I have a conversation. And I'm like, what do you think it is? And he's just like, um, he's telling me, like, we, we start role playing answers. There's only seven questions they ever ask in an RP interview. I know what each of those seven questions are, and I give you an answer, okay? And um, so, like, he was just giving terrible answers, right? Like, I would ask him, like, okay, let's say you had a project that had to do this, right? Like, how would you do it? And he's getting so granular into it, right? And I'm like, bro, that's like me saying, hey, you're applying to be a Pizza Hut delivery driver. Tell me your experience. Right. And it's like, oh, well, I got experience with putting the car in park and in drive and in reverse. And it's like, that's, we yeah, don't, don't need to know all that. that. Yeah, bro. Like high level. Right. And then I also realized it was, a, it was a, he would say, he was like, I don't have a college degree. I don't even have a high school diploma, bro. Like, I don't think I'm supposed to be here. Right. And so we had a conversation about that. I gave him how to win friends and influence people. I said, read this fucking book. He read the book. His very next interview, he got hired. Very next thing, I said, tell me about the interview. What happened? He was like, bro, we barely talked about RPA. I said, what y'all talk about? He was like, we talked about how, like, he loves to go to, like, casinos and gamble. And he loves to, like, like he's, he can feel the energy in the machines and he can tell when it's going to hit. And I was like, that was, he was like, yeah, that's all we talked about. And he was like, bro, like, the book talks about, um, like, be interested in them. Let them talk. Yeah. The, pe- people like people who let, th- people, people like to talk about talk. themselves. And people like, you can have, we can have a whole conversation. I say nothing. I just ask you questions and let you talk about yourself the whole time. And then you would walk away from the conversation like, man, AD is a pretty cool dude. He read that book and got employed. Starts making $90,000. I was like, holy shit. If he can do it, anybody can do it. I got a, I hired a coach. I paid $4,000 to a marketing coach to get on Instagram and start doing all this stuff. And like, literally that is how I got where I got today. So like, that is like my most significant success story. The guy literally, I did not think he was going to do it. He didn't think he was going to do it. And he did it, bro. Like, low confidence, no tech back, no nothing. And I'm just like, bro, if you can do it, literally anybody can do this. Anybody. You know what I'm saying? And so I love that. And that's the, like, that's really why I do this business, bro. Like, I could go and just stack up contracts. You know what I'm saying? And I don't need this. I don't need to do this. Like, I've been good. I've been straight. My family, we do what we want. Both of me and my wife, we drive luxury cars. I fucking walk around all day in a Versace robe. You know what I'm saying? Like, I live a grand life. And I and it's not because of RPA University. I've been, I've been doing this, right? But my favorite part of doing all of this is working with a guy who goes from a place of, like, I don't know if I can do this to, like, holy shit, I did it. And then, like, like it, I feel like... I don't watch boxing, but like you know, at the end of the the the, um, the match, right? They, it's the it's the one opponent, the ref, mm-hmm. the other one, and then you raise the guys. I feel like the referee in that situation. Like I'm raising your hand, bro. You did it, but like I'm there and I helped you. And it's like, mm-hmm. bro, I love that feeling. I that, that is why I do this shit, right? And I just don't think that like if I was lying, it's like you wouldn't hear this passion in my voice and things like that, right? So everybody that I've ever worked with, you can go and look up their LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And bro, it's it's the simplest technology there is. Like, if there were something simpler, I would shut down RPA University. I would go and spin up another company, and I would name it whatever the fuck that technology is, university. And that's what I would teach people because it's not about being overly complicated. It's not about being super intelligent. It's about learning minimum skills that you need to learn in order to get the job, and then get out there and start interviewing and make your mistakes, take your lumps, and just keep going until you get to the point to where like you've messed up. You know. All the questions they're going to ask, you you know what not to say, you know what to say, and you, then you just keep going, bro. Yeah. 